So th this is a this is an actual physical, you know, kind of generic representation of our robot that yeah. I had to make in order to run the simulation. So we got the dimensions from the robot right there from Kuka. Somebody gave us this robot back in June because um, he couldn't make it work. So uh, we spent about two weeks with it. And we just found <laughs> he like, just gave you the yeah, yes, it. literally. I, <laughs> yeah, I kid you well, not. Well, he, he gave just, us the robot and a pile of other junk. So, so he's pretty much. So we had to get we figured out how to make it work in about three weeks. So I spent the next couple of months trying to find some software. This program, Sprout Cam, is from Russia. Sprout Cam. And they give it they give it free to hack to universities and hacker spaces. Really? So yeah, you can get six licenses of it for free. So what it and plus they just happened to this this new release they just put out in in May has robot code built into it. Because it's, it's different from CNC. Because CNC it's is XYZ. From G -code. It's not G code. No, it's, no, it's, it's not. It's G -code. called it's Kuka KRL robot language. Kuka. Because yeah. I mean, if this axis moves <laughs> and this axis, every axis affects the other, every axis. So watch axis. this. So I've been spending like the last couple of months learning how to do this. At least. He's eating flames, and the robot there is starting to move, and everybody's like, "No." Oh no, it's not moving live. He's oh, still. He'd serious. still have to write the G code, the the code out. So what I'm what I'm doing here is I I brought I found this model of like a, a bus on the web. So the simulation will actually show you. Uh, cool. So I'm doing a roughing tool path to take it down, because it um it will do a, like a multi a contouring tool path where the tool stays normal to the surface. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm hogging out the material on one side. This is a roughing path. Yeah, and I just figured out a few minutes ago how to tell it where to stop. Because if you oh, look, really? if you look at the uh, what do you mean the way to stop? Well, watch. See, look. The the top level of the piece from the x-axis over this way uh -huh. is positive six or from it's positive sixty six. So I basically just told it to stop at zero. So it's going to stop right there. Okay. So this way you can tell a you can be sure it doesn't machine too far down. Okay. What's the accuracy of this uh, end? Hmm? What's the accuracy of this? Uh, uh, it's at least half a millimeter. Depending on what you're doing. So. And you got this for free, it's crazy. Yeah, no kidding, hey? The robot broke. and the program. It was broke. It can't do, can we do wood? We can do wood on there, I think it's the max. Yeah, you'd have to wood. run it a little bit slower. But. Wood is kind of pushing it. Metal is no. It it's good for this, uh, you remember in Dune, it had this robot that he would fight with. Oh, what? In Dune, the movie, he had this machine that he would fight with. What movie? Dune? Dune. Uh, oh, Dune. Dune. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, the, the fighter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we can yeah. do it with that. Yeah. We yeah. can just uh, tie someone to this with a yeah. one meter uh, cord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, when, when, once I figure all this out, what I want to really do is, uh, you can buy it from Kuka, of course, but if we could put a rotating table on the front of this thing, uh -huh. it would rotate as it carves, that would, that would be awesome. That's the ultimate goal. But for now, I'm just, you know, you, you have to. And you to tried it. It's, it's, it really talks with the machine? Oh, yeah. I've cut, I've, I've cut some square pockets, so I know it's accurate. And what kind of tooling you can put on it? Um, well, here, let's go and I'll show you. So I, I have a, a little CNC router out here that I used to carve foam. I'll show you what I can do here. Oh, sorry, turn up the heat again. You know, my like that. Yes. So there's the cabinet cord over there. Uh -huh. The okay. computer on top is just a file server. The only bad thing is it's running Windows 95. <laughs> so this is my machine right Windows here. Windows 95. Yeah, I'm kidding. So I use this machine to carve these little architecture reliefs. Nice. Wow, that's good. So I use this bit right here. It's a 16th inch diameter. So and my we'll step over, you know what step over is? Nope. Okay, it's it's the amount of so with the way this works is the machine goes this way and then it ticks up and it goes back this way, it ticks up. The amount it's ticking up this way is only five thousandths of an inch. So that's why they look so nice, is because there's it's there's no machining marks on them because it's taking up such it's a no small, backlash. Right. It's no backlash. Right, yeah. This this one is like uh which one is that? What's the name of it? Mm -hmm. It's called a Zenbot. Zenbot. Yeah, it, it's made it's made by like a one person shop in California. It's actually cutting board plastic, HDPE. Damn. That's yep. Cool. So and so here's the tool that I made for the uh, robot. So I I was actually using this over there until I found that little aluminum spindle. So this is just a Hitachi woodworking router. 
Uh -huh. So I made I made the parts for this on the CNC router in the wood shop in there. Now this was this was a real pain because the, the bolt pattern on the head here is it's like a hex hex shape. So the bolts are actually they sit like right under where these need to connect. So this piece screws onto here. This piece is just an, intermedi an intermediary. This piece is what these are actually fastened onto. So it's just two large bolts that here and here, they go all the way back to what here, that's holding the whole thing on. And you made this with this? Uh, yeah, well, I made it with the machine in the wood shop. Oh, okay. Because that one's a little bit beefier. I don't like to cut wood over there because that's, it's a little rickety, not rickety, but it's just, it's not strong enough to do like hardcore wood. So, yeah, there's, there's six motors, it's huge, uh, it's all servos with uh, resolvers on to check the positioning. How much weight can this hold? Uh, about 66 kilograms, I think. It's not that much. Uh, it's built like totally yeah, tank, heavy. Yeah, it weighs, the whole thing with the platform weighs about 24 or 2500 pounds. So, we've got, a, we've got a, um, one of our members is a professional machinist, so he came in here and he's got all these... Uh, uh, rivets, what do you call what, this? What the hell are these things? Um, shims. Uh -huh. So we, we leveled the whole platform before we put the robot on top of it. So it's, it's bolted into the, this is an inch thick solid steel, and only bolted into the, the floor with concrete anchors. So once, and then once we did that, I designed this enclosure around it. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's called a safety enclosure, not a room, so we didn't need a building permit. For that. Okay, okay, that's so, not. And this is the pendant that controls it. So this this controls that? Yeah. This actually has a, has a duplicate of the screen over there. Nice. And it's all connected network? Okay. Yep. So, well, so when I write the programs in there, um, the... You don't actually need the... Com the well, the, that's the file server that, that's connected locally to the, the robot. Yeah. A KUKA. Yeah. It's KUKA, KUKA is, an, it's an acronym for like two companies in Germany that merged together. So I don't, I don't remember what the German words are, but that's what it means. I oh, had a party when it started like uh, revolving. What, what's the, what's like the, the term? It can turn uh, um, a well, limit? It, technically it can turn, it can turn all the way around this way or all along this way. Past, so five degrees past here. So, but we, have, we haven't wired it up with any safety systems yet, so if I wanted to, if I was in a bad mood, I could literally extend it and put it through the wall. And so, <laughs> that's why I'm the only one that's allowed to operate it right now, because there no, there's no real safety systems in place yet. What did you cut with it? Um, well, I cut that, but that was, uh, I did that just by jogging it around. Oh, uh, with, uh, with, with that so pendant. So this, I programmed it to do this. I measured these, and these are about as accurate as you could possibly go for. So yeah. now I know how to do that. It's just the next step is machining that statue. And then anything this can tool can cut, you can right. cut. So now I'm starting to look at. There's a company called Frog Tools that all they make is, is equipment for cutting foam, and they make bits that are like eight, ten, even twelve inches long. They're like three hundred dollar bits, but they're out there. So. So it's got Man. Six, it has six, uh, six axes, uh, torso, shoulder, uh, elbow, and then uh, one turning here, the wrist like this, and then the end, which turns like this. You're taming the beast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I was out of work for a year, so I had <laughs> plenty of time to work on this thing. How long are you working on this? Uh, well, we got it in, like, mid, like, like the first week of July, and uh, I can't... Take all the credit. Um, there's another guy, our, our current treasurer, he's like an electrical IT genius. So the cabinet came with a whole bunch of electrical diagrams, so he traced them all out. And we looked inside the cabinet, there were just some loose connectors inside the cabinet. So that's... Apparently this guy spent like 160 total hours on the phone with KUKA. Why can I make this thing work? Well, <laughs> the simplest thing is usually looking at the a problem. So. You're using a brushless for this? This came with it, like this brush? No, no, no. This, this I bought this. This is mine. This is just, this is just for this machine. Um, so I think mean, that's why that that's gonna stay up on there now, pretty much permanently. So. So yeah. This is a centerpiece for hackerspace, man.
This like oh. this is totally dominating. Oh yeah, well, when we get when I figured this thing out, we get that CNC router running, that plasma that CNC plasma cutter running, ain't nobody gonna touch this. We're gonna be the coolest place in the Midwest. It's creeps down in Chicago and can have nothing on us. Chicago all has a space like this? Well yeah, well there's like three or four maker spaces in Chicago, but this is a mega space. Yeah. This yeah, is I, I don't think you're gonna find any play, any other place like this in the country, I'll be honest. Um, a place that's as nice as this, has as many nice tools as we do. I can agree. Somebody's been cooking. Yeah, someone's been cooking.